Time for this week's open mic. We continue to talk basketball, and we welcome in now Andy Morgan, sports director at our sister station KTSM in El Paso, Texas. He joins us on the phone. Andy covers UTEP, and for the past year, he's covered Rodney Terry. Andy, it's tournament time in college basketball, but neither Fresno State nor UTEP made the postseason. The Bulldogs made a case to be in the NIT. The Miners didn't even make their conference tournament, Conference USA. Why did UTEP have such a bad season? Well, I think that, uh, you know, Rodney Terry definitely came in and, and definitely had to do some patchwork with what he wanted to put together as far as the roster. And when you look at the roster that he basically put together, I mean, you had on any given night, uh, you know, four freshmen playing major, major minutes for them, uh, two sophomores and then one senior. So that was kind of the makeup as far as their roster was, you know, kind of put together, six, seven maybe eight-man rotation, but that was basically it. And, uh, you know, you had four freshmen basically learning on the fly the entire time and uh, two sophomores that were kind of forced into uh, leadership roles, you know, maybe before they were even ready for that. When a new coach takes over, there are growing pains, but then there are some serious issues in this case, off the court. UTEP has been in the news a lot the last couple of weeks. Two players announced they're transferring, one of whom led the team in scoring last season. And then earlier this week, in back-to-back -back days, we learned two assistant coaches are out. Lamont Smith for being involved with that huge college admission scandal, and Brian Burton, who's not being retained. Burton followed Terry from Fresno State. Andy, what do you make of all this? Um, I guess I'll start with, with the two transfers. I know kind of, you know, for those who don't follow Utah basketball all that, all that closely, um, it looks bad that you have two guys kind of uh, take off one, two days after the season actually ends. Um, but with that being said, and a lot of this um, is maybe speculative on my part, but it makes a lot of sense. He kind of came in, and those were two guys that uh, were not his guys. Those guys were guys that the former head coach, uh, Tim Floyd, had kind of brought in and fit his scheme. And I think Rodney Terry, as I'm sure you guys know there in Fresno, is a guy that likes things done uh, his way. And he wants things done his way and on his time. And um, I just don't think that Evan Gilliard or Kobe McGee kind of fit the brand of basketball that he was going for. But then as far as the uh, – the assistants go, I mean, that was uh, the Lamont Smith deal. I mean, he brought uh, Lamont in, of course. Uh, Lamont was the uh, head coach at uh, San Diego, was also an assistant at UNM, and then uh, resigned at San Diego basically amidst uh, domestic violence uh, charges that were brought um, about him that were later dropped. Um, but that was already kind of a cloud when Lamont first came in that was just like, man, I don't know about this hire. I'm sure Rodney vouched for him, and uh, unfortunately – it just didn't work out with him being brought up in the whole college admission scandal. I mean, that was definitely a bomb that was dropped uh, earlier this week. And then the Brian Burton stuff, same thing, uh, especially the next day. Didn't anticipate that happening at all. Don't know exactly what to make of it, uh, except for the fact that uh, in my talks um, with people around town that has no correlation, you know, one has nothing to do with the other. It's just a matter of uh, – you know, Terry making a decision that he didn't want to bring Burton back uh, next season. Andy, Coach Terry made a comment recently, clearly frustrated with results. He compared UTEP's bad season to when he first got to Fresno State, and I'm paraphrasing here. He basically called it a JV team, and he was looking for the varsity. That didn't sit well with people at Fresno State. How did people in El Paso react? Uh, people here grew very, very restless of the Tim Floyd era. Um, the fan base was just was just done with it. I mean, a guy that was was here a while and was uh, you know saying that he was going to get results out of uh, out of his guys and just never made it to an NCAA tournament. So people were ready for that next chapter. So I don't think people here in El Paso took as much offense to uh, to, to what he had to say coming in here. But I think what Terry was trying to do was just make it clear to the media and maybe through the media to the fan base that. Uh, these type of things take time. It took time for him at, at Fresno State. They would have liked to have won a lot more games this season kind of leading into next year, and it just didn't work out that way. Well, one of the building blocks that we expect to see on the court next season is Bryson Williams. There are a lot of Fresno connections on UTEP's roster, but none bigger than Bryson Williams. He had to sit out this season as a transfer the previous two seasons. He played at Fresno State, and he was a third-team All-Mountain West player right before he left. Do you know what the plan is for Williams next season? How does Coach Terry plan to use him? 
I think that they want him to be the conference player of the year. I, I think that's what, you know, those are high expectations, and, and maybe that doesn't happen, you know, in his junior senior season. Maybe that happens the following season in his senior year, but that's the type of player that they feel like they have in, in Bryson Williams. And I think that uh, you got a guy that, that they kind of want to run the offense through, and, and I think that they have big plans for – for Bryson to be a big contributor, what he's been able to kind of construct as far as the four freshmen that played a lot of minutes uh, this season. Uh, there's also a lot of other transfers, including Bryson Williams, that um, are set to play major minutes. So what would you say are the realistic expectations for UTEP next season? Realistic expectations, you know, they want to – they want to compete for a conference championship. I don't know if that's going to happen next year. I definitely expect them uh, to win, you know, a road game. Let's let's start there. I mean, it was it was definitely some road woes. 0-13 on the road. I definitely expect them to win more than eight games in, in the season. I see them as, uh, you know, best case scenario. They're you know quadrant one, quadrant two type of team within Conference USA. And of course, you know, this year they didn't make the conference tournament. That's the first time that's ever happened in, in over 20 years. I feel like I have to ask this, Andy, after an eight-win season. I doubt Rodney Terry is on the hot seat after one season, but would you say his seat is warm? Um, I definitely don't think he's on, on the hot seat with the, with the, um, you know, the two assistant coaches leaving. I thought that that was, um, I thought that was strange, and the only thing that I thought of is, is UTEP has a new athletic director. Uh, his name is Jim Center, and he likes things done by the book. He doesn't like to take black eyes uh, when it comes to public perception and that sort of thing. So um, I think that, you know, Rodney Terry's in no hot seat whatsoever when it comes to what his team, team did on the floor. Um, and if they have, you know, another type of season like they do next year, you know, maybe that seat heats up a little bit. He's Andy Morgan, sports director at our sister station, KTSM-TV in El Paso. Andy, thanks for the time and insight today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew.